Okay, so this is my first video. Um, just trying something simple to see how it turns out, whether the videos work. I have some scrap pine lumber. This is from a house that they built down the street. Borrowed that, yeah. Uh, I've got this piece of Luan plywood. I don't know if you can see that. Two by two Luan or Luan, whatever it happens to be. Yeah, anyway. Um, it's like the cheapest plywood that you can get at Lowe's, but I think it has fantastic figure in it and the fact that it's cheap just makes it even better. Uh, my daughter's birthday is coming up, so I'm going to see if I can't manage to make her, and show you how I did it, a shadow box, or maybe a light box. I might put some lights in it. I've got some LEDs that I could use. And this is the stencil that I'm going to use. I printed it out reverse, because I'm actually going to glue it on the back of the plywood and cut that out on the scroll saw. So, uh, I guess we'll get started. Like I said, simple. So, first thing, need to lay out, I decided on an 8 inch circle. And just need to get that marked out on here. Make sure it's actually there. Okay, that should work. Um, eight inches was completely arbitrary. I didn't really have any real need for eight inches, but I figured, what the heck, you gotta start somewhere, right? You probably can't even hear me. So, this is my first video. I apologize if it seems like I don't know what the heck I'm doing, or, wow, okay. See, some people just use an awl for this. I have a nail. It's not working. So, what I'm going to try to do after I get this drawn out, I am going to rough it out on the bandsaw, but eventually it's going to go on the lathe. And I'm going to turn just a shallow, round box, almost more of a dish, I guess you could call it. Once I get that cut out, once I get that turned, that's going to be the back of the box. I'm going to make a lid out of the plywood, and that's going to have this design. This is actually just a a pumpkin pattern cutout. Uh, works great for woodworking too. So, that's got the circle laid out. Um, like I said, I'm gonna make a dish out of this. Uh, it's gonna have a small lip just for this to attach to. And then on the inside, I'm probably going to attach some LEDs. Actually, just came up with that idea, so let me find them right quick. haven't even opened these yet, just bought them. Got the idea for them from Peter Brown. I think I've watched just about all of his videos, they're great. He is hilarious. And it's just a strip of LEDs. It's just a piece of tape, basically, with some LEDs on it. You can cut it to whatever length you want. You put on a connector, attach it to power, and hey presto. So hey. Let's see if we can't work that in. I know I know this is gonna be an exceedingly simple project. Uh, probably not worthy of a video, but it's my first video, you gotta start somewhere, right? Alright, so I guess the next thing I need to do is drill this out or uh, drill a little inset so I can get this chucked up on the lathe. Okay, so Let's go do that.
Right, so now here we are over at the drill press. I'm sure you've seen one of those before. Uh, grab my forcing bit. I currently have my pin jaws set up in the lathe and this inch and three-eighths Forstner bit is the largest one I have so I'm just gonna drill a little inset just for that chuck to grab onto on the lathe and from there let me make sure that's not yeah I'm not in your way I just want to drill a big enough inset so I can grab it on the lathe and uh, still kind of working out how I'm actually going to turn the front portion of it. Okay, so make sure we got this lined up on center. Okay, that down. Here we go. Plenty deep. That's about a quarter inch deep. Probably didn't even need to go that deep, but why not have a little extra to grab onto? Alright, so now over to the bandsaw. Okay, here we are at the table saw. My good old craftsman 12 inch. I said table saw, didn't I? Here we are at the band saw. So here we are at my good old craftsman 12 inch band saw. It's old, but it was free and it works. So Got our blank. What we're gonna do is just, we're not gonna cut out the circle, we're just gonna cut off the corners so that once we get it on the lathe, it'll be easier to turn. Uh, this is actually going to end up being the front, uh, but the chuck is gonna go in here, into this little tenon to start with, and uh, we'll get the whole thing turned and then we'll grip it. I think I'm gonna be using my coal jaws to grip it. But for right now, we're just gonna take the corners off. So, here we go. Figure out something to do with those, maybe. All right, so there we have it. Man, this wood, uh, like I said, came from a house that they built down the street. And I don't know if you can tell, see the dirt that's all over it? Man, I swear while they were building the house, they were walking all over the wood and the sheetrock and everything. And then they just went ahead and put it in the house with all their muddy boot prints on it. You could see them in, uh, you could see them putting the texture on the walls and they were covering the muddy boot prints with texture. Oh man, it was horrifying. But anyways, uh, we'll go over to the lathe, get it chucked up, round it out, and uh, yeah, just see what happens from there. Alright, so I've got it mounted into the pin jaws on the lathe and I'm uh, just going to start working on truing it up. It is not only out of round, but apparently not an even thickness of bore. Either that or the table on my drill press is not set right. Which is always a possibility. Alright. I'm actually going to start out with this tool that I made. It doesn't look pretty, but it's uh, just something I whipped up to hold those carbide cutter heads. God, I'm really cheap. I don't know. I just if I can make something or, or, or repurpose something old without having to buy a new one, I'm all for that. Alright, anyways, let me start roughing it out. Like I said, this is actually going to be the back. That's not quite far enough in here. There we go. This is actually going to end up being the back, and we'll end we'll start.
All right, now we're going to be sanding. Um, I do just take a scrap piece of wood and I wrap the sandpaper around it. You need a hard surface to back the sandpaper or these lighter colored spots, the softer spots of this pine, will actually dish out and the harder parts will stand out. You know, sometimes that's not so bad if it's the look that you're going for, but I'd rather this was round. So I'm going to be sanding it with this hard backer to keep everything even. I'm going to sand the face here, the edge here, and then we're going to flip it around. Probably going to put it in my coal jaws, like I said. And uh, I'm going to flip it around, and then I'm going to hollow out the front. All right, uh, I got to turn the shop back on, so this might get a little loud. So, I got it flipped around, uh, I got the cold jaws, you can just barely see them sticking out here. Uh, I got the cold jaws installed. Uh, I do apologize if you really wanted to watch me set those up, but uh, I figured most people would be bored to death watching that, so I just went ahead and did it off camera. Uh, I got our little box chucked back up, and uh, now I'm just going to hollow it out. Well, I'm going to chew it up first and then hollow it out. Uh, I want to leave just about a half inch lip around here and then I'm gonna step in and do a little quarter inch uh, mortise I guess you'd call it, a little quarter inch shoulder uh, and then I'll hollow the rest of it out till it's about I don't know maybe a quarter an eighth an inch eighth of an inch deep off the back and uh, what that's going to do is I'm actually gonna cut a circle out of the plywood that you saw earlier and that's gonna sit on that shoulder inside this face and uh, it's going to have the mini cut out of it and then I'm going to run those lights I showed you around the inside edge, uh, have power come out the back and uh, we'll see what happens. Alright, here we go. Okay, here we are back over at the trusty bandsaw. Uh, I just cut out the course that we're going to be working with. I'm going to cut this circle. I'm going to cut it close to that. Uh, this is a 7 inch circle and uh, our bowl, the shoulder on the bowl is just a little bit less than 7 inches. So uh, we're just going to, I'm just going to cut it out close to the circle. And I'm actually going to go and use the lathe to true it up and uh, to get it a snug fit with our bowl. Alright, so we're over here at the work table. I've got the blank trued up and I went ahead and just cut kind of roughly around there. Um, 
so we've got our pattern that we're going to cut out. Now I'm going to glue this to the back of the blank because that way if I have any trouble getting it off with the adhesive or anything like that, I don't have a bunch of funky residue still stuck on the front here. And uh, the way I, that I attach it, I think it's pretty common by now, just use this uh, spray adhesive, you just spray it onto the back, you gotta let it dry for a few seconds before you actually stick it to the wood, or it's really tricky to get off without a heat gun anyway. I don't have a heat gun, I use a hair dryer. Alright, shake up the uh, adhesive, and then just uh, spray a little bit on there. Not too much. Just get a light coat on the back of it. Just figure out where you want it to go. And stick it down. Nothing to it. Nothing to it at all. So I'll take this over to the drill press and you've got to drill a starter hole in each area that's going to be cut out. So, we'll go do that. Alright, so over at the drill press, like I said, we've got to drill a starter hole on each one of these little areas that's got to be cut out. And that includes her eyebrows and everything else. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a bunch of little starter holes. Uh, I cannot stress enough the importance of using a scrap piece to prevent tear out, uh, especially on this Luan plywood. Uh, if the drill tears out the pack, uh, it makes getting the because the tear out usually clogs the hole, so it makes getting the scroll saw blade through the workpiece a real pain. So, but I've got the scrap block, so we're not going to worry about that. That on it.
right, so we've got that cut out. Hey, look, you can already see what it's kind of going to look like. Actually, it's going to be from that way. There is just a little bit, just a tiny little bit of tear out. So I'm going to sand that off, and uh, I'm also going to go ahead and peel what's left of that paper stencil off. Once I get that off, uh, I'll put some finish on it, and uh, I'll probably go do, do all that off camera, and I'll meet you back at the work table while we start putting in the lights. That ought to be fun. All right, so we're back at the workbench here. Got This is going to be the back of it. I'm going to put on the top here, I'm just going to put a little hanger so we can hang it on the wall. I've got a hole drilled in the bottom here for the connector to fit through. The connector for the lights is just this little thing hooks into a power source. Got the power adapter. There's a power adapter there. The lights, I've got a length of these LEDs enough to go around the inside of the dish. This is finished. I love the way that figure comes out on that Luan. It's uh, turned to just fit inside there. It fits all right in there. And uh, you can still pull it out if you need to. Uh, this, these LEDs, it's just like a paper backing with some LEDs across the front of it. And every now and again, it's got these little copper connections. You can cut it to anything, any length that you want, as long as you've got one of those copper connectors there on the end. It also has, you can see the glare coming off of it on occasion. Uh, it also has a vinyl coating over the top that's supposed to make it waterproof. Whenever you cut it, make sure you've got those connectors on the end, and then you have to cut and peel off a portion of that vinyl backing. And then it slides into the connector. It goes underneath two little pins in there, and then it closes down, and that locks it in. And then if you plug it into power, power strip right here. You hook it up to power, plug it in, and they are pretty damn bright. <laughs> Ridiculously bright actually. So that's gonna work out pretty nicely. So we're gonna take this. Oh and uh, it's just a an adhesive backing on this stuff. So I just need to get that started. Start getting that peeled off. There we go. And uh, they're self-adhesive. I'm just going to run the connector through that hole. Lay this guy down. And I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm just running them around the inside edge shouldn't be uh, too much of a problem. Peeling the backing off as I go around and just sticking it to it. Alright. So that's got that pressed in. Try it with the power again. Got a ring of lights. I kind of like these things, they're cool. They're simple to use, like I said, that vinyl actually makes them waterproof in there. So, you can even put this on something outside. You might have to do something to waterproof the connection, but uh, you could put the lights themselves on an outside project. You know, that would even work there. So now we put that cover back on. You cannot see the lights at all through there. And there you have it. Minnie, illuminated in all her glory. And pink, unfortunately. Turn it off, turn it on, turn it off.
tell you what, maybe I'll try killing the lights. Show you what it looks like with the lights off. Real easy project to make. And uh, all I'm going to do is put a picture frame hanger on the back of it. And it's good to go. I think my daughter will love that. Alright, thanks for watching. And uh, if this video ends up not being a total failure, I might even make a few more. Um, if there's anything that you'd like to see, uh, I don't know, leave me a comment or something. And uh, I'll see if I can't make a video about it. Alright, thanks.